Hi, uh, I'm Situ Sita Raman. I'm the director of the Center for Customer Analytics and Big Data, CCABD. In terms of my own research, I work a lot with individual level customer data in terms of analyzing their behavior over time. And on the basis of that understanding, I advise firms on how to price or promote or advertise uh, their brands or product offerings. Let me briefly tell you about one project that I'm currently working on. In this project with a large uh, supermarket retailer who has a few thousand stores in the United States, we are using their loyalty card data which tells us what each customer does from one week to the next in terms of what products they buy, what brands, what price they pay and so on. And by analyzing that data, we are able to tell the retailer how to better design their coupon promotions. So right now, this retailer designs three types of coupon promotions. The first one called the personalized coupon is uniquely tailored to each individual based on what that individual has bought in the past. Now the second type of coupon promotion is called a lifestyle promotion. So think of it as a back to school uh, type of coupon. So this comes only at a certain time of year and obviously it's relevant only for a small group of households and not for all customers. A third type of coupon is even more narrow. It's uh, sponsored by one manufacturer, a large manufacturer but just one and sends coupons on one or two brands in a specific product category. So you can think of these th three types of coupons as varying in the levels of personalization that they adopt. The first one, the one-to-one -one coupon is very personalized, very high touch. The second is medium personalized and the third is low personalized. So if what we do first is analyze the data to see the return on investment on these three types of coupon promotions to see which one is working better than which. And then what we do is advise this retailer on how to better design these coupons moving forward. And here are our main findings. Interestingly, we find the lifestyle coupons pay off even better than the one-to-one -one personalized, high personalized coupons. When I say they pay off better, what do I mean? They return more on a per customer basis is what I mean. So that type B coupon is first best in terms of per customer return. And the type A or the one-to-one -one coupon is second best. And the type C or the one brand coupon is third best. But bear in mind that the first type of coupon can be sent to all customers, while only a small fraction of customers is suitable for either the second type or the third type. So overall, in terms of overall gross margins that are influenced by these coupons, the type A coupon is still best and better by a mile. So we then better optimize each of these coupons for the retailer to, to advise them on how to do even better than what they are doing now. And we find that the first type of coupon can lead to a 30% gross profit increase from not sending any such customized coupons at all. Now that is quite huge considering supermarket retailing is wafer thin profit margin business. So a 30% profit margin is increase is uh, fairly substantial. Now we are working on a related project to that the project that I just briefly discussed in which we are advising the same retailer on how to stock products in the store. Now which product categories to stock next to which product categories and within a product category, which brand to put at eye level versus in the bottom most aisle versus in the top most aisle. So for this, we make use of what are called store layout charts, which actually tell us store by store where each product category is stocked and also store planograms, which tell us how individual products are stocked within store shelves. By applying some predictive models, on how customers buy these products and letting those purchases depend among other things on how products are stocked relative to each other, we can then recommend to the retailer how to better design the store layout as well as uh, 
the product configurations within specific aisles moving forward. So that's an ongoing project. So hopefully this gives you a sense of the kinds of problems that I work on in the consumer packaged goods domain, specifically in the supermarket retailing context. But of course, these methods that we use here apply to other industries, other types of data sets as well.